Hello there, it's Sean and in today's video we are going to review together one of my sales calls that I've taken previously and the reason we are doing this is because I understand that for a lot of us closers, we take closer programs, sometimes we go through multiple closer programs and in these programs for a lot of us if we didn't have prior sales experience, like I didn't have prior sales experience and moving up the learning curve we learn scripts we learn what to say we learn the sequence the syntax of a sales calls of sales calls we go through role plays we go through mock calls right we go through mock interviews and knowing the words is one thing like you can memorize the script you can memorize the syntax some some people just put their script right in front of them and they just read of it i've even seen closers just put the script on their screen itself and they just read it while talking to the prospect Whatever works for you, okay, whatever style you've been trained, okay, it's all okay. What I'm trying to help address here is the difference between the reality of it's very easy to know what are the words to say, right? There are many programs that provide the words. There are many programs that, that give you role plays. And the difference is when you role playing, you know that every step of the way that's like your friend on the other side you no know, it's your course mate it's your buddy you can always pause and say wait 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 let's pause the role play let's backtrack a little bit and hmm what should i say right but when you have a live prospect in front of you and it's a raw it's a real it's a visceral human being with emotions with questions sometimes with tests and challenges it's very different to say, well, I'm just going to ask you, hey, uh, prospect, thank you for meeting with me today. What I would like to do on this course is to find out a little bit more about you, what your goals are, where you're currently at. And if it's a fit, we'll go through the program you know, that you applied for. And if you like what you see, just give me a yes. I'll do my best to enroll you into the program. If you've seen everything and it's a no, just give me a direct no, no hard feelings. Sounds good. Like a lot of scripts, they teach this kind of framing the call thing. And the subsequent steps, right? Asking the goals, the pain, you know, the root causes, and then the, the nightmare scenario, and then you summarize the call, and then urgency, consequences, and then decision, finances. At the start of the call, you know, you, sh you also need to check out are there any other stakeholders or decision decision makers. It's very easy to to know all this, but when you have a live person in front of you, sometimes all of this just go go out of the window, especially sometimes when. <laughs> their emotions are a lot stronger than you, you have to be super grounded, super aware, to not be shaken, to not be led by them in multiple directions. Sometimes, as you will see in the call recording I'm going to share today, if the prospect at the end of the day is not a fit, we are not going to force them into a close. Right? We do not do that. If at the end of the day, they're not a fit, they're going to get a refund and then you know your commissions are going to get taken back. So it, it's not win-win. If it's not a fit, it's really not a fit. So at the end of the day, if that person should not be close, then so be it. Okay? But as you will hear, as you will hear in the most important part of the call that I'm about to share, I asked, I asked the prospect point blank, you know, there are two kinds of people. One of them, they don't want to do this, they shouldn't be doing this, right? And if you're clear that that is you, I will give you the space, like we do not have to do this. But what I'm really hearing is that, are you hoping that I can help you through this? Like you want, are you asking me to help you navigate this? Because whichever it is, I'm going to respect your decision. So which is it? So clarifying this gives me and the prospect clarity on how this call is supposed to go. Is this the case of you don't want to be closed or you want me to help you get through this? Because sometimes they just don't want to be closed. They should not to be closed. And that's fair, right? We don't want to drag this out. But a lot of times, different prospects, they want different things. And sometimes they don't know how to say because the emotions are running all over the place for like B2C calls, they don't even know how to express themselves. Sometimes they need a little push from you. Sometimes they need, they know that they're in their mind. They know that they're in their head. There is a cry for help. They want you to 
just call them out on it, you know, kick them down there a little bit and like wake up, you know, to call them out. Like, get out of your own head, right? Sometimes they need clarity, like they want to see specific scenarios or use cases because prior to meeting with you, they might have been affected or hurt or scarred really bad by some kind of uh, prior experiences that we might not know about, right? And sometimes what they're really looking for is just your groundedness, your confidence and your leadership to say, look, we are going to make a call here right now. Sometimes that's just what they need from you and we don't know. So by me asking that question, it gives both of us clarity on how are we going to do this call? Because at this point, I can tell you that the, this is not my offer. It's someone else's offer. It's a drop shipping offer. It's a fantastic offer. There are more than 500 uh, successful students in the program. So I know that I should be giving this program to as many people as possible. And I was also given a script. And in this team, this influencer wants me to read like word for word, word for word. And every time he reviews my call, he's like, don't say this, say this follow the script so for all of us we are sandwiched in between you know what our influencer wants us to say and what the prospect needs to hear and what we truly feel that we should be saying and by this point of the call the entire script had gone out of the window there's no way if he listened to my call there's no way he's going to be able to critique the call because the whole script has been you know out of the window and this kind of prospect okay why we exist as closers there are some prospects, they are problem aware, they are process aware, they are solution aware, they are, and, and these days they are all offer aware, they already know everything, right? Then when they book the call and they're easily closed, sometimes I don't really count that as a close close, you know what I mean? Because for a lot of times it's the prospect closed themselves or the marketing did all the heavy lifting you just show up for the final round and collect money, you, you're not really a closer. And these, these things do happen, especially in a team with fantastic authority, fantastic marketing. There are a lot of people that just love the influencer so much that they just book a call and pay in full. Right? These things happen, but you cannot count on that because you are closer because you're supposed to close the people. You're, you're not supposed to close the people. They are not meant to be close, right? We already established that. But you're supposed to have the skills and the finesse to close the people that deep down, they want to be closed. They should be closed. They are a fit. And you know, you absolutely know that you have to close them. Otherwise, it would be unethical. You know that you have something they need to use and then you let them go. That's on us, right? So this was a scenario where we had a prior conversation and this prospect was... The, the way that this influencer does his marketing is first of all, he shows his offer up front. He shows the price up front, right? 6K paying full. And prospects know that. So those that see the price, you know, when they when they cannot afford it, they will just filter themselves out to a, to a lower ticket offer. So a anyone that comes through, they're problem aware, they're process aware, they're solution aware, they're offer aware. Like the influencer literally did a video to share everything in the program then they book a call, right? So we had a prior conversation and this prospect was like, I'm problem aware, I'm process aware, I'm solution aware, I am offer aware, you know, I'm ready to go, I'm gonna take a leap of faith. And that's something she said so many times, I'm gonna take a leap of faith, I'm gonna take a leap of faith, I'm gonna get my credit card, right? Then suddenly, suddenly, she froze. She panicked and the emotions were running wild. And what you're hearing on this call is an edited version. I've edited out the parts that are sensitive to the, the company and sensitive to the prospect. And so uh, there were a lot of long pauses where I gave her the time. Okay. And I've used the software to trim out all the, the long pauses. So what you'll hear is a continuous, continuous conversation. But what actually happened, there were a lot of uh, long pauses in between because she was, I just don't know why she was just freaking out suddenly. So if you're a closer, this is exactly what you need to prepare for, right? Because I mean, in, in the perfect world, you have your script, you set the, you, you know, you do your rapport, step, small talk, and then they're okay. You do background, they're okay. You ask the goals to tell you. You ask the pain, they tell you. You say the process, they love it. You say the offer, they love it. You drop the price, they love it, right? 
such a case where is your skill because they are closing themselves right it's precisely calls like this that really test you as a closer so i want you to really experience what a live call is like and to, for you to see for yourself that what you're going through in role play is memorization it's preparation you cover all the scenarios but a real life visceral call with a real life visceral prospect okay is a completely different beast so without further ado i'm going to play that recording and you'll be able to hear my audio as well okay so we i'm going to mute myself and let's hear it what are we going to do today because like um i need some more court, like more uh explanation so the pro i'm gonna do the program for 30 days after 30 days i'm gonna open my account explain it more because i just okay so the last recap. time i was in the situation i don't want to be in again okay so. recap i'm gonna share my screen now this is exactly what you're gonna see uh when you enroll can you see my screen so first thing this will be the first page you'll see. It's a welcome message from Shane. And then under start here, which is exactly what we're going to do, you start here. Okay, meet your assistant coach. Okay, immediately after you get access to this section, you'll book a call with Isaac. And the next available slot is on Thursday. Okay, then there's a quick chapter on the mindset we need to have as professional dropship. Chapter one, start selling on Amazon. You see this video right here? Can you see this video here? Mm-hmm. So because you're based in the States, we'll go for Amazon sign up US. So immediately when you do this, you will set up your store. You don't wait for 30 days. Okay. Um, I don't wait for 30 days. I'm going to set up my store and I'm going to have access to suppliers and, and other, let me share something about teams, like team to work. Yes. So what did the team do? For them to package the item and send it to the customer. Okay, so there's no packaging involved. Remember, I told you there were 10 chapters inside this uh, video portal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so chapters 1 to 7, you should take about less than a day, if not a day and a half to complete it. They are very short videos and very self-explanatory. So once you finish chapter 7, which means that in about two days, you will land on the 30-day Amazon Accelerator. Okay, here is a one-on-one -on -one with either Shane or Isaac. Okay, so if you're wondering basically why are there so much technical terms? At the start of the call, she actually said, I don't want this to be a repeat of, you know, a previous experience. And the right way to do it would have been to address that, right? And address the fear. And the reason why you're hearing all these technical things is because on this team, Okay, all of us closes, <laughs> we have to, the influencer is very process oriented. So we have to say, you get this. A and some teams are like that. Some, some teams, they are very focused on the closing skill. So they'll say, skip the technical part and, and address, you know, the, the root concerns. But on this team, this influencer is very process oriented. Uh, he, he fired, he fires people for not following the exact steps. So I'm kind of in a tricky scenario and a lot of teams are actually like that. You have to follow because for them, this process already works. So they're not willing to change it, even though, you know, to, to us, it might make sense to humanize a little bit more. So it's kind of like you are an actor and you've been given the script, right? So they pay you to do it. And if you don't want to read the script, they're just going to hire someone else to do it. So, of course, if you have a lot of experience, you have a lot of weight in the team, you can go ahead and just throw the script out of the window and you, you won't get fired. But uh, I'm not at the current spot yet, so I'm just following what was given to me. At the same time, I know, and I'm thinking like, oh shit, you know, uh, she just said that. And <laughs> instead of addressing that, I have to say, you get this, you get this, you get this. And this happens for a while until I got so, like, I had enough of it and I just, I just threw the script away and I call it out. Okay, so it's going to go on for a while. I'll give it some time. And here, they will give you the three product categories that you'll focus on listing. The suppliers will be given to you as well. You will be taught how to research winning uh, products. 
and they will build a one-on-one -on -one schedule so that every day from the time you wake up to the time you sleep, you know exactly what you're doing. So there's no packaging involved. You go to your supplier, you list the item that they have, a sale comes in, ship the product to them. That's it. So um, the team you said that's going to come, that's going to, I don't know, I forgot the, what you said about the team, something about a team uh, that after you're going to, I'm going to have few people to do something at all. Remember exactly what you said. Yeah, so in our current recap, we've addressed chapters one to seven, right? Six are all your suppliers. Seven is the accelerator, right? So then eight, nine, and 10 is about automating the different parts of your store that can be outsourced. To who? These people are called virtual assistants. So they are located remotely okay, or in some other place, and they will work for you at a very, very affordable rate, 5, 10 US dollars per hour to help you list items, manage your pricing, ship orders out. But all that comes at a much later part of your store. Right now, when you're just getting set up and getting your first wave of sales, you don't need yet. No what else do that? A lot of questions. Slowly, no worries. So it, it, I, when after I, get, I pay whatever I have to pay today um, for me to set up other like my my account my uh my username or whatever that is that entail um, how much money that i have to have for that so your question is after you make the first installment how much money would you need to have mm, to set up my my store to set up it to build the store to 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 have to do you pay the supplier or something to make those? Okay, so, uh, to, mm -hmm. so first when, of all, when the customer order. Yes, you do need. So for Amazon, there is a monthly seller fee of $30 a month to be listed as a seller. It's a flat recurring monthly fee, $30. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when you what receive else? an order, when you receive an order, you will go to your supplier and make a purchase first so that you ship it to your customer. But don't forget, you have already received payment first because someone bought your item first. That's how you receive an order. Yes? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, right now, I've customer an, I've pay an... you? You were saying something. Yes, like right now, I've just received an customer. order. I've just received an order. So the customer has paid me already, right? I, I listed my product at a markup and someone saw it. He's just paid for it. So now, after this call, I have to turn around and go to my supplier and buy that item from my supplier but instead of my address i'm gonna put my customer's address customer's address yes now i'm in singapore but my buyer is in canada my supplier is also in canada so the supplier is going to ship to my customer they're both in canada it's going to be done within three to five days i haven't even seen so what's really happening here is there are two levels of conversation on the surface it's a emerald kind of character just trying to analyze every possible scenario so that you know hopefully if one of them goes wrong if this guy can't answer one of my questions then yes i don't have to do this but i really want to do this but you know i can't stop this this whole back and forth thing so i just hope you know one of us messes this up and then it doesn't have to work so that's one level of the conversation happening on top and then underneath underneath is is a case of is this going to work can you support me is this going to work can you give me the confidence is this going to work can you call me out that's what's really happening but it me having to follow the script is very inconvenient for me to you know get out of that, that layer but I, I really want to get out of it already at this point and so a lot of times when you do these sales calls, don't be fooled because by them asking you all these logical questions, there's always an underlying fear because we've already, she knows everything in the program already. And then now she's asking me all over again. It's very unnatural. Okay, so you have to pay attention to the different levels of conversations that are happening. Okay, it's, it's not what it seems. The product, I'm not even in care. Okay, so let's, let's say the product and they the sub the customer said they didn't find the order do you have a do you have to have a insurance for that 
Okay, so first of all, the suppliers are personally given by Shane and all our students use that list of suppliers. So they are proven quality suppliers. In the event, mm -hmm. let's say the customer receives your product and they're like, it's not what I want. I'm not satisfied with it. Okay. Shane will give you a precise script, first of all, to de-escalate the situation to say, look, first of all, let's analyze the, the situation. What's the problem with the product? Okay? And what's the best way to resolve this problem? Okay, if the problem is able to be resolved, then no problem. But in the event they want a refund, okay, you will get a refund label from the supplier. Okay, and you will send it to the customer and say, put this label on the item and ship it back to the supplier. So when the supplier gets the product, you will be refunded by the supplier, then you refund the customer. So in any case, uh, every step that could happen when you're supporting your customer is... Yeah, so all this were completely not needed at all. At all. It's a deeper level of assurance that I needed. Uh, I, was, I was a little bit handcuffed by uh, the script and uh, there's another important factor here, which is a lot of programs tell you to focus on the script. They tell you to focus on the tonality. They tell you to focus on, you know, objection handling. And one of the main things that are really, is not being emphasized, it's product knowledge. The ability to diagnose, that's one, and product knowledge. The reason I'm able to answer her question was because I spent a lot of time studying the offer, going through it, and making sure that I know the product well enough. If not, it will always be a case of, let me check and get back to you. I am not too sure. Then you cannot close. So a huge part of being a close is actually being an expert and knowing your product so well that you can. You don't have to coach the prospect because that's not your job. Your, your job is to close them, but you can give them enough assurance so that they feel safe. Uh, making that investment with you because they know that you're selling something that you live you're selling something that you're absolutely certain in okay already documented by Shane exact scripts what to say how to resolve it how to handle any kind of inquiry the four to five hundred students before you have gone through all the various uh, scenarios that has happened so is this a case of uh, overthinking or you wanted like, more assurance on how the process works yeah like Do you hear that big fat loud yeah? That's the biggest loudest year I've heard in this seven minutes of, of the call so far. And this was the first time me breaking the syntax, me breaking the script of what's given to me because I had enough. I, I knew that if I don't, if I don't just call her out on it, she's just going to ask me about the whole program and then it's going to be one whole hour of, do I have this? Yes. What if this happened? This. Do you have this? But what if this happened? It just go on. And so you, at some point in time, you have to call it out. Okay. I told you, I don't really have the money. Yes. Just, I'm just gonna, you know. You see? So that's the real concern. That's the real concern. That's why. Okay, it's not because she doesn't know the product. It's not because she doesn't trust the product. Okay, she actually has the money, but it is a it is a decision she has to make. Okay. I would like you know, put myself out there, but I need to make sure that I'm gonna have that money back, like or more, because I don't have it. You see, she say I don't have it. I tell you how I know she have it. Okay, first of all. On the form, she wrote she has it. Okay, do you have the funds? Yes, she has the funds. Because if they don't have the funds, they are filtered out of the call. Secondly, you know what's the computer she was using on the call? MacBook Pro, the big one with the big speakers on the side for her laptop. You know what's the phone she's using? iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's the newest phone at the time of this recording, and it is, it is the upsized one. And she lives in the big house. Okay, so. She definitely has access to the funds, but again, what's happening up here? Is it the truth? If it's the truth, fine. Okay, then don't do this. Keep your money. If it's not the truth, should we talk about it? Okay. This is something that I'm going to devoured. So I just need to be sure what I'm doing before I invest. I lost a lot of money before so i don't want to do that again and 
trust him. The money that I trust uh, lost was a lot, and then there's no way I can make that back. So. so I didn't address this at the start, and then now it came back. Right, because she had a prior experience before, and that's what's stopping her. I need something that I know is gonna work, and I'm gonna make it work with my part because I'm gonna t learn how to do it. But when I finish learning, is it something that I'm gonna like when I practice it or do it? Is it gonna give me a return or you know? I just want to make sure I'm not just going blind or I'm not going to lose money that I don't even have. Remember, I'm not working right now, so it's just the money that I don't have, <laughs> I'm going to invest. So you just, you just need to be really cautious. Okay, so with your permission, the field, yeah. shall we... Yes. Yeah. With your permission, shall we address the root of this once and for all? Sure. Because... What I'm feeling is a bit of uh, uncertainty and a lot of fear stemming from a previous experience. I mm. don't know what happened and I don't want to go into it. I believe they didn't protect you and they weren't in your best interest. They didn't provide a guarantee and we've been doing this. If my influencer hears this, he's <laughs> completely, uh, you know, wonder what, what, what are you doing? Because this is not in the script at all. It's really what I wanted to say. Because if you don't have the money, save it, come back next year, and I'll come back next month. We don't have to have this conversation. So what's, what's the deal here? You know, you have to say it. For four plus years now. So we get the kind of risk and uncertainty that a prospect feels when they invest in such a change. That's why we provide the money back guarantee. So the only way this doesn't work is if you keep overanalyzing and you don't sin. This program has a 90 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. So even when she comes into the program, on the 89th day, if she wants out, she'll just get every dollar back, no questions asked. So I couldn't understand, like, why was, she, why this thing, you know, does she not feel the I think she probably doesn't trust the guarantee I think that's what it is but a deeper level than that is she might not trust herself or not even deeper than that the previous experience might have really affected her so as a closer it's like you you don't scold them you know you don't get frustrated but it's like let's extract the fear that this fear is what it is right so are we gonna address it and walk through it together or it's just going to grip you and we don't do this. So, how? what's the best way you want me to do this with you, right, with your permission? This is not an objection handling technique. This is not some like, oh, you say this, then I say this. Or you say this, then hmm, I say this. No, this is really understanding the psychology and you just need to put yourself in their shoes. All those times when you needed to make a big investment and you had the same like last minute shock, okay? how would you want the person on the other end to support you so that's that's the the state of mind i was in scenario a you get in you list winning items you start selling things and you don't have to worry about money after this scenario b you get in you set up your store you list the items at any point you're not happy with the program you don't feel safe you don't think this business model works you can just enforce the guarantee and you're out so why not give yourself the chance to stand up again build something right because if you end this call now and you're like i don't trust it see so you must catch the sound she said right but that's the part i didn't understand you, know, you have 90 days to test this risk free right? so why and then she was like right i want to keep my money and then you spend the next week next month thinking what if i i had set up my so why not just give yourself the chance okay so, um, how much I have to pay for this? 2667 for your first installment. Okay. I'll send you a link. Mm -hmm. I'll send you a link right now. So that little laughter from fear to nervousness to a, a more, a relatively more positive emotion, it is a good sign because this prospect in particular has that two sides. When she panics, she really panics. And then when she's confident, she's really confident. So once you pick that up, you have to 
move with her permission. Game, go there together. Go there together. Right. Take care of that uh, invoice. Okay, it's in the chat. Press it on your phone. You replace. Input your card. D and as you're taking care of that, I'm going to set up your. Account. What are you doing? Okay. What are you doing? Why did you send me the link? In my YouTube. I so now, unexpectedly, this little kid shows up okay, and interrupts the call. That's what you're hearing. You know, why are you in my face? Boy. Hold on. Ah. Hey. Did you receive the link? Yeah, on the... Um, did you send it to me in my email too? Yes, it's in our Zoom chat and it's in your email as well. Oh, the one time is 600 and what? I mean, 6,000 and what? The one time is 6,000. The three payments is 2667. She absolutely knows the price because the price is written on the form. The price, the price is written everywhere. And then when the paradigm is chaotic, you know, suddenly there will be interference. It has to happen. When the, when the paradigm is chaotic, suddenly you can't see the numbers. You know, it has to happen. So as a closer, you have to be still, you have to be firm okay, and lead them through this. Okay? It's more than 600 for a three-time payment. Yes, that's why... It's not 600, it's 6,000, you know? Full price is actually the 2667. The 6,000 is to reward people who are decisive and pay in full. So the full price is what you see with the three payments. Like 800 and 8,000 and something. Like that more money to pay three times. Yes, you trust you. So a pay in full is 6K. Okay, if you split into three parts, it's 2667 times three. And we have covered this multiple times. It's on it's on the page she booked a call. It's uh, I've told her the price previously already, and now when it's time to make payments, suddenly, you know, we have to analyze the price again. What's the price? I don't know. All right. So these are all signs that someone is uh, just emotionally freezing. So again, stop. Let's address it. Okay. It's gonna be more money than I can afford if I pay three times. Do you have enough cash flow to settle the first installment, 6-7? Why is it so expensive? Yeah. Okay. Why is it so expensive? So in a script, they say, why is it so expensive? And then what are we trained to say? Is it a question of uh, expensive or is it a question of value? Or the script might say, uh, I don't know to you what is expensive right? and all the kind of script you, you cannot use it now now you cannot it's all out of the window already because it's a completely different context there is a lot of fear in there right so we either don't do this or what's what's the best way to support you through this because you can, you don't have to do this right? forget about the invoice just just put it aside for a while and you just uh, hold your phone up and look at me okay so we do not have to do this if you yeah yeah so this is the part because basically on that call right she was so emotional that on zoom she actually put the phone down and then she was panicking like why is it so expensive so we lost that connection so at that time like we've been struggling for 11 minutes now so this is what uh, they call a come to jesus moment okay that's like look at me Let's talk about this, okay? Don't feel fully ready, okay? This call can either be a process of me supporting you whatever beliefs that you need to shift, but we don't want to force anyone into the... We know this is a formula that works, so this might be a test from the universe to trust yourself, trust Shane and the program and the formula that has already worked for more than 400 students before you. They work a 9 to 5. They are not tech savvy. And we are just listing items. It's not something very complicated. So would you like me to support you through this process? Or are you going to step back, overanalyze? Over mm, it's that three times. It's 800 and something. It's more than I, I don't even know. If I'm going to get that back, that's a lot. So if I, if I pay this right now, when I have to pay the next payment? In the second month. So it's a monthly installment. I cannot 
afford that. You might not have the full sum right now, and I can understand that. Do you have enough cash flow for the first installment? You just need your first month to start making profit. If you don't get in and there's no other sources of cash flow, is that going to be more expensive down the road? Not being trained in this high income scheme, isn't that more expensive? It's, it's the monthly payment thing. But the thing is, even though I do that for a month, I learn everything and then I put my stuff out there. How much money that I will get or to even pay the, the, the next month or, yeah, to even pay it for the next month. Because I don't have money. I don't have any other money <laughs> to pay for the next month. That's, that's my problem. Okay, so now we have two. Pay you for this month and then boom, next month comes like that. Yes, that is one scenario that I'm could happen. Not making okay. money. Let's let's look at what could happen. Scenario one, you get in today. In two days, you set up your store. In two days, you meet Isaac. They start listing items on your store. Items that are already selling. It's quarter four now. Everyone is shopping. You bought, I can see you bought a MacBook Pro. You have an iPhone Pro Max. Those cost thousands of dollars. Are they not expensive? But are they making you Yeah, money? but I... No... <laughs> Now, what is your but my problem is for the next month? Let's say okay, I started today and I put stuff out there. How many people will actually actually make ten thousand after they open the store? I'll, I'll put it this even... way. I'll put it. I'll put it this way. We have a so you're you're young. You know you're smart. You're strong. And is that your child? Yeah. Like... Yeah. You never told yeah. me there was this little. You never told me there was this little guy in your house. And you're strong because you have him. And you have to be strong. Sorry, is it a him or her? Him. Yeah, you're strong because you have him. And you have to be... The reason I know this works is because in our program, there was uh, this cancer survivor and she didn't have a lot of time. But with the limited resources that she had, she also implemented the program. And then in six weeks, she made 10K in sales. And I don't know how old she is. She looks like she's in her 40s and like we are young you know we have the health we have the fitness we have the time and when i look at someone like that put in the effort to take action i know that anyone for sure can do it and this lady she's young she's smart she has resources she's resourceful she can definitely do it she just needs to trust herself and follow what already works because you have him and in the 30 days, at any point in time, if you don't see yourself making your investment back, you can always back out. But if you don't even try, then how you know? Oh, I'm good. I, I can back out and get my money back? Yeah, that's what the guarantee is for. We, are, we, we know people go through moments like this, and we don't want them to feel like this is get rich quick and throw you a bunch of stuff. This formula works because Shane and Isaac hold everyone's hand step by step. I am not even doing this full-time. I am an employee employed by Shane to take these calls to enroll people. I don't have time to even man my store. And I've just made 772 Canadian dollars in sales in one week. And that's not even me. I just crossed a, a thousand today. I think a lot of things. It's just five or 10 items that I just put up there based on what I learned in the program. What if you have 50? What if you had 100? And what if you have zero? Or a week you make one day, you make one. Don't look at me oh, because fair. I'm not, I'm not even practicing it. No. Don't look at me. Look at, look at Jen, for example. I'm looking at next month how to pay to something. I'm looking at that. And I don't have. So she has to give herself the chance, right? I mean, even if it's 20 days, she comes in, she tests the program out 20 days. It doesn't work. She can still get her money back. And she don't even give herself that chance. So the, the real problem isn't the problem. The real problem is inside. So there's no script in any closer program that can pull it out. Because this is the part where you know everything works. You need, it's a test. You need, what, what, it, is, what it is, is you need the guts. You know, you need to take the step forward. Because you save your money, the bills are still going to come. You don't have any other skills, you have no other sources of income, she's not going back to work, then what's the plan? Just sit back and wait. 
right? So she has to try something. And why not try this risk-free for 20 days, 30 days, right? To pay. I'm a store that I have to post money every, every month, a mortgage, and a lot of bills to pay. So what's the solution to that? Monthly. What's the solution to that? Is it to save? If your solution is to save, I will not enroll you into the program because I don't want you to come in and second guess yourself every day. It's either you come in and give it your best. Yeah, it's very important. You don't want to make them feel that I'm going to try all kinds of closing technique to just overcome your objection and, and you know, promise you that you'll make a lot of money and you know, you just come in and, you, and uh, make them feel bad for not enrolling. You have to let them know that if it's a no, we will respect your decision. If it's a yes, how should this conversation go? Because we can't keep going back and forth. What What do you want me to do here, right? And you never ever look back. But if you're half-hearted, this is not going. So what's the solution to the monthly bills? To become a business owner that's fully independent or to hold back and wait? There's a call you have. Hold on a second. I'm trying to see where I'm going to get my, that money. So what are you looking at? Are you texting someone? Are your numbers? Second. What is what's happening? I'm paying you. I'm actually paying you. Hold on. Like, I'm actually gonna do this. This is the part where the peak of the emotions, because she knows she's this close to getting success. Okay, it is a life skill to know how to spot products and trade and buy and sell them at a difference. It's arbitrage. You know, my dad used to do that, so I know this skill pretty well. And she knows she's this close to getting something different. And that's when the paradigm will just resist violently. Every one of us have been through a phase like this when we're this close to change. Okay, the universe tests you to the max because all you need to do is just hang up the phone and say, Sean, nope, it's not for me, and you're out. There are prospects that do this, you know, we do not force them because that relationship will not end well anyway. So for me, it was like, what's she trying to tell me? To leave her alone or to give her a push? So I had to make a call myself. And she has to make the call herself. Yeah. Why are you keep disturbing Baba? But Anna, I Hold can't hear you. It's not very clear. Are, are you okay? Where are you? Yeah, I'm here. Hold on a second. Let me look at my card. Baba, why are you keep disturbing my peace? So she overcame it herself. I don't know what happened in the episode. And she said, let me go get my card. So she thought through it. Okay, and she's come to a decision. Okay. Um, hello? Yep. All right. What is that? Says something about Slack? Slack. Huh? Okay. I can see it now. Okay, Katiana, your payment is gone through. Yes. What's a, a Slack? The Slack. Okay, hello? Katiana. Your payment has gotten through. And we are setting up your account right now. Okay, focus on me. Don't worry about Slack. I would like to have your undivided attention for two minutes. Okay. Okay, first of all, can you share with me what is uh, that little guy's name? Kaden. Sorry, Kaden. Kaden. Can I, hold on, let me read. Yes, hello? Yes, so... Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Now, for yeah, yourself and Kaden... His name is Kaden. Yes, Kaden. For yourself and Kaden, okay, we now have 30 days. This is a program that works. This is a formula that works. We list good items. We sell good items. We create happy customers and we make a profit. You have access to Shane. You have access to Isaac. They are setting up your account right now as we okay. As soon okay. as you get access, it will, it will be sent to your email. Log in, set up your account. It's very straightforward. Book an onboarding call with Isaac. Okay, let him know what your current situation is, okay, what your income goals are. If you have any fears or concerns inside of you, lay it all out and talk with him. He's going to be your coach. He's going to take you through every thing to come all the obstacles all the wins good days bad days okay we are here to okay so i'm basically just onboarding her into the program setting up expectations and letting her just reminding her that this isn't get rich quick there's work to be done there are steps to be taken it's all outlined in the program and you know the first few steps uh, she needs to know but essentially i hope you can see that this was an emotional call for her you're hearing the fast forwarded version 
the actual version was much longer. I don't know exactly how long, but there were long pauses that I had to use a software to <laughs> remove all the pauses. That's why what you're hearing is the, it sounds a little bit accelerated, but that's what it was. And you can see there were three changes uh, overall. First, she was very calm. The initial meeting I had with her, we had an initial, uh, initial quick call, very calm. She knew her problem. She knew our process. She knew our solution. She knew the offer. She knew the price. And then you can see on the second call, like this call, she suddenly became a different person. She forget the price. She don't, she, the numbers were being sent to her. She don't know the numbers. Okay, because why is it so illogical? Because the emotions are taking over and there's something gripping her. But you can see when she decides, then she's very strong, right? So is it a case of this is someone who doesn't want to be close and we, sh we should leave them alone? Or is this a case of they want to be close? they should be closed and we need to have the real finesse, the real finesse, not the script. By this time, the script is completely out of the window. So for a lot of you going through programs that tell you, you know, if they say this, just say that. If you know they say this, you go to the script and you just, you just say this, right? Or, you know, change your tonality and that kind of thing. It's all good for role play. It's all good for mock calls. But when someone comes at you like this and they are not attacking you, but it's actually they need your support. They need you to just bring them over the finish line. Okay, because once the coaches take over from here, they can start healing her mindset, healing her attitude. You know, to think, should I play defense? You know, save all my money, and then the bills are going to come, or should I try something? Just try something to start a second stream of income. At least I still have a fighting chance, and coach her through that. Okay, what to do exactly? How to build this? A new thing the coaches will take over from there right so this is what it's like i hope that uh, if you've clicked this video you're watching my videos that my content gives you a direct raw transparent reality of what remote closing is because again i don't want people to think that remote closing is easy just take a few calls a day i take five to six calls a day when I'm not taking calls, I'm following up with prospects, I'm calling people, I'm texting people, I'm building my own pipeline. So it is a profession and it's only for professionals. So be careful, you know, the expectations that might be going around. Be careful what kind of theory you consume. Uh, go for content that gives demonstration. Go for content that gives you the real thing. And at the end of the day, I'll say that when the script was completely out of the window, okay, if you ask me how I know how to say these things, it's because that's how I talk to myself. When I have a fear, when I have an uncertainty, that's exactly what I tell myself. I say, Sean, okay, calm down. What's happening here? Is it this or is it that? If this happens, what's going to happen? If that happens, are we able to accept? If no, what should we do? We go or we stay? That's how I think as a person. So when I talk, it's like I'm talking to myself. A lot of times I like to tell people that closing is us talking to ourselves. We are having a conversation with ourselves inside subconsciously. And the prospect just happens to hear how we talk to ourselves. So if you're someone that you don't know how to talk to yourself, you don't know how to close yourself when things get confusing or difficult, you won't be able to hold space for someone like that. Okay, so after watching this video, it's been a long video, but uh, I hope that this hour of your time actually helps you to prepare for calls in the most realistic, the most realistic way possible that a theory program can never bring us there. If after watching this video and listening to this experience, you have a question, you have something that you'd like to discuss with me, just check out any of the links below, which are on social media, let me know. Hey Sean, I've seen your call, your, your YouTube video about your call, uh, and you know these are the questions that I have, and I will support you from there. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you in my next video. Cheers.